Hello everybody, it's Laura Husban here from Hairdressers Journal International and we've got a great session this morning and it's the secret to retailing high value items supported by GHD and if you want any more information about GHD you'll be able to see in our comments you can go to ghdhair.com and I'm super thrilled that this morning we've got GHD's Head of Education Janine Jennings with us and she's going to be giving us her hints and tips for successfully selling high value items to your clients. She'll also be sharing her insights on upcoming trends, which will be super useful for you and how you can use those trends to encourage your clients to invest in high value professional tools that will they'll be mean well, they'll, they'll be able to recreate the looks at home. So, yes, yeah, so it's fantastic to have you with us this morning, Janine. Thank you and good morning, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and share all my hints and tips on retailing. Definitely. Well, we're excited to get the secrets from you this morning. So, but to start with Janine, do you want to maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at GHD? Absolutely. Um, so I am a hairdresser to trades. I have been in the industry a very long time. Um, but I've been with GHD for nine years. Um, I product, like worked as an educator in Scotland and then quickly progressed to an emerging markets role. So kind of supported new countries that wanted to kind of buy into GHD. Um, after that, I came back to the UK um, where I was based heading up retail for a while and then moved back to the US where I headed up education for North America for two years. And now I am back and I am head of education for the UK. So it's been a journey. <laughs> Fantastic. You've been all over the place, haven't you, Janine? All over, yes. And we, we were talking before the start, actually, about how it's been strange times, because normally you would be going left, right and centre, wouldn't you? Whereas yep. during these, these past few months hasn't quite been like that. Yeah, I've been getting cabin fever in my kitchen. I think the first month was nice. And then I was like, right, I need to get out and actually get on a flight. So exactly. nice to be back to some sort of normality. Fantastic. Well, it's great to have you with us this morning. And I guess, should we kick off, Janine, with maybe you yes. explaining why it's important for hair salons to stop quality, professional, high value tools for clients to purchase in the salon? Of course. So there's quite a few elements to this. I think, you know, as a stylist, you know, my, my clients invest a lot of money in beautiful hair colour, beautiful wet line products. And, you know, they, they want to have a beautiful style that's maintained for six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So for me, as a stylist, it's important that I recommend the very best products so that their hair looks absolutely amazing every single day and not just the day that they come and see me. I mean, there's been so many clients that I've had that go, oh, my hair only looks good like this when you do it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I want your hair to look good the whole time so that when you're getting stopped in the street, it's my name you're given and it's a salon that you're working that's getting shared. So, you know, having these high value tools that actually can create long lasting looks mm -hmm. only that that actually care and look after your hair as well is really key and that kind of innovation part of that is key as well so the better the innovation the healthier the hair amazing and I guess that's the whole essence of GHD isn't it I mean I, it absolutely. blew my mind when I found out what GHD stood for absolutely it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> lots of good hair days good um, hair days so what advice would you give to um, a hairdresser or a salon owner or even a freelancer who wants to increase their retail sales of big ticket items but doesn't know where to start? Because I guess it might feel quite daunting to say to a client after they've spent X amount yeah. on their hair to then invest quite a lot. Absolutely. Of money. Yeah. And I think even for me, like when I was a younger stylist, I used to I used to hate the word sell. Like mm -hmm. I'm a salesperson, I don't want to sell to my client, and I felt that same way. I was like, they've just paid hundreds of pounds. Why would I want to recommend this product? But the truth is, your clients will invest in amazing hair. They're investing in you as a stylist. They're investing in the price point that you charge to create beautiful hair on them. So naturally, they're going to want the best products to then keep that style in place. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, the best way to do this is. Talk about the product you're using, but don't do it as a heavy sale. Talk about, you know, this is the product that I use and this is why I like it. Um, and then show them how to use it as well. It's not that you're giving them a heavy sale, you're just recommending. Um, and I, I, I heard this years ago and it stuck with me because retail is such a big thing for me, but you would never go to your doctors or your dentist to find out what dress you're wearing at the weekend and kind of what you're, what you're getting up to. You go for professional advice. So this is where we as a we as stylists should be recommending the very best products in the range to maintain beautiful, healthy hair. 
Definitely. I think that's a great point there, Janine. And clients respect um, you as a professional, don't they? So they want that advice. I mean, don't get me wrong, there will be clients who will go, oh, it's fine, I'll leave it. And that's fine. Don't take that as, oh, I'm maybe, I was maybe being too pushy. Because mm. the clients that will think about what you said and they will come back and purchase from you or ask again and then, then invest in that product. I mean, who knows? They might just be waiting for that paycheck to come in so that they can. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So would you say, is there a secret? I mean, that's the kind of the essence of our session today, isn't, yeah. isn't it? Is there a secret to retailing high value items successfully? There actually is. Um, oh, and I, this is a, is a secret. And I think it's such a simple thing, but we don't do it. I think stylists, we just were so busy, like get, talking to your client, doing the hair and it's actually understanding their lifestyle and actually their needs. So sometimes I as a stylist will use a certain product because I personally love it, but it's not necessarily the best product for that client. So for me, um, now that we work with GHD, we've got a whole portfolio of products. So there is a product for everyone. So, you know, for instance, we have a kind of good, better and best strategy. So we've got an original styler, which has been around for years, better, which is gold and our best technology, which is platinum. I would never recommend our very best technology to a young girl who maybe doesn't have a large budget and maybe doesn't do her hair that often. So it's really about finding out, you know, what is her lifestyle? How often is she doing her hair? And what are her hair concerns? Once you know all that, you can go, okay, she works full time. She probably does have a larger budget and she normally wants the best products. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned about color damage. So I'll naturally recommend her our Platinum Plus Styler, which is our best technology. And then I tell her the next product down. So she's making that choice. I'm not just going, you must buy this one. It's, we've got this and we've got this. You make that decision, but I'm recommending Platinum Plus because of these reasons. Fantastic. So the lifestyle and the hair needs of your client at that time. And do you try to put those feeler questions um, to your client during the um, consultation and during the appointment itself as well? to try yeah, and get so a it's, for... yeah, it's really interesting because like obviously in GHD, I manage all channels. So I manage professional as well as the, the, the premium retail channels. And I always say to the girls in premium retail, it's a lot harder for you guys to build that emotional connection in five minutes when someone's coming up to the counter. But as a stylist, you've got your clients sitting there for 45 minutes to sometimes a three-hour appointment, depending on what they're getting. So you've got time to ask the questions. And most of the time, you already know your clients, the relationships they are. So mm -hmm. in being able to say, oh my God, we've got this new product in, or I'm using this product because of this. So you do have that time to kind of get that information from them. And if it's a new client, 45 minutes is actually a long time to, to try and get some questions out of them about their lifestyle and kind of what it is they do for work or, you know, what are their hair concerns? So, yeah. Fantastic. And there's been a buzzword recently around bespoke and personalised and making sure that a product is specific for that particular client. Do you think that helps as well? A hundred percent. Like this is a big thing for what I'm doing right now with GHD is and um, we're building this kind of retail platform for the salon so that we're not just talking about one product fits all because it absolutely does not. You know, if we look at a brand like, for instance, Apple, you know, mm -hmm. I have an iPhone 11, someone might have an iPhone X, someone might have an iPhone 6. We all don't need the same things on our phone to make it good for us. And that's exactly what we do as a brand. There's products for everyone. And I, I don't just mean GHD. I mean, like, wet line products. I mean, any products that you stock in your salon. It isn't one product fits all. If you're recommending a specific product to a client because of their individual needs, that will help them build up more trust with you as well. And it will make them then want to come back and buy from you as their professional stylist. Amazing. And do you have any tips and tricks that will really show clients um, why it's worth investing in those professional tools? Yeah, and I think, that, again, this is something that we are bringing into this kind of retail um, module that we're going to be rolling out our salons. But we should be showing the clients how to self-style. And it's something that we're not really doing because we're so busy. So, you know, we've got our next client sometimes coming in, waiting at the reception, you're kind of running 10 minutes late. Okay, I've used this product, but I don't talk about it. And I'm not showing you how to create this technique. 
So it's about making sure that that time is crucial and you spend that time with them. And if you don't have that time, then dedicate maybe a younger assistant in the salon that can be that GHD expert that can go through and show them the technique, the angle, the way they pull it down to create that dream hair that they want every day. Amazing. And what would you say um, makes high value tools stand out from the crowd and um, from other tools on the market? And how can stylists explain that to their clients? Because I guess a client might just see two tools and think, oh, they're exactly the same. They'll give me the same result. And yeah. they don't understand what makes one different from the other. So this is um, something that, like for me, living in the States was a huge eye opener because there's so many different electrical brands over there. And some go into like a, a Target and buy a, a styler for $18. Wow. <laughs> Based in a GHD styler that's over $200. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was just it's a pure lack of education on what is the right heat for your hair. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm always about hair health over anything. So for me to invest in a more expensive product and know that there's innovation behind that product that's going to really maintain the health of my hair, but also give me the longevity of the style. Yes, by all means, you might get a result with a much cheaper styler, but everyday use will start to melt the natural keratin on the outside of your hair and damage it. So yeah, like someone who's uneducated, they may steer towards that kind of cheaper product. Um, However, me as a stylist, I know that I'm going to use GHD because I'm working for the company here, but, you know, we are all about innovation. You know, we have over 60 scientists whose main job is to develop the most innovative tools to control hair through heat. Mm -hmm. Brand is about beautiful, wearable hair, but healthy hair as well. So that higher like value, you know, for me, that that's not a concern. It's actually a, a talkability point to my client. Fantastic. And actually, Janine, that um, made me think what you were saying there, I guess, as part of the consultation and the appointment. And um, do you find it quite useful if you especially if you can see damage on your client's hair yeah. to talk to them about what they've been using and maybe what yes. that damage? So th- this is what we, we, we do with the kind of retail module now. So what we are, we are kind of hoping that stylists start to do is do that consultation and not just being about colour and what they're wanting, but actually feeling their hair before they've actually had any service started and saying, you know, what are your main hair concerns other than your colouring cut? Mm-hmm. Um, and you, that's when you find out a lot of concerns. They'll say, oh, my ends are quite dry. Oh, I'm brushing my hair. My hair's snapping as I'm brushing it. You know, and then that then will give you the 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 guidance to then go, okay, so I can see you've actually got a little bit of heat damage here. Are you using a heat protection? What products actually are you using at the moment? They might say, oh yeah, I use X, Y, and Z brands. And then you straight away know that potentially that brand is quite a cheap brand. They've maybe bought it in a supermarket. So then you can start to kind of, throughout your appointment, talk about GHD and the benefits of our products and the innovation behind them. Amazing. Questions are key, guys, to really understand your your client and then recommend the proper products for their hair. And that is a big trend at the moment, isn't it? Hair health, especially with lockdown and everything. People really want to take care of their hair. So it's a great opportunity for starting. Yeah, I think if if lockdown's done anything for (laughs) them, it's actually educated the consumers had so much time to actually educate themselves on products and brands and actually what their issues are with their own hair. So yeah, like there's so many different clients that you'll get. You might want get one that's very savvy and she's a savvy shopper. So she'll know more about probably the product than you expect her to know. Mm-hmm. You'll get one who's maybe just uses an original and has always wanted it and you could never upsell her. So mm-hmm. you'll know by the questions that you ask what kind of buying mindset they are as well so that you can then recommend that way. Amazing. It's great tips there, Janine. And um, how would you advise um, a stylist to structure their appointment so that there is definitely enough time to show them how the benefits of using professional tools at home, especially in this day and age where this you know, and age. Um, appointments have to be longer anyway, don't they? To- yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that is actually a benefit now, mm-hmm. being able to retail a little bit better. You know, for I, I've got many friends who own salons and I've got one friend who will have one client so she's getting a color and a cut no one else is in the salon Mm -hmm. so so she has she has got that full time to be able to recommend properly 
and then I have other salons who are leaving a 30 minute gap after each each client. That 30 minutes is a fantastic time to talk about the products that you've used at the end of the service. Yes, we've used color, we've used wet line products to dry in the hair. Then by the end you go, okay, so I'm styling your hair with GHD. These are the products I'm using. You know, you've got that time and you're not going to be stressing that your next client is sitting at reception. Um, you've got time to then retail. But failing that, guys, it's definitely a good idea to really upskill one of your younger team members so that they can be that GHD go-to person in your salon and actually can take your client through that sales styling um, part of the service. Amazing. Um, and Janine, oh, I should just say as well, if anyone has any specific questions they want to pitch, pitch to Janine, feel free to do so. We've got plenty of questions to get through anyway. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got any burning questions, please do feel free to share. And do you have any advice, Janine, about how stylists can show clients how to recreate looks on themselves? Like, would you advise them to put a, um, a wig on them, a, a stylist to put a wig on their own head so they can actually show the client how to do it? Or do you have any tips for that? <laughs> There's definitely a couple of ways we can do this. Yeah. You know, as a female, if your hair's down, it's easy because you can actually show the technique on your own hair and then your client can mimic the technique and do it on their hair. Now, the key with anything um, from a self-styling aspect is get the product in their hands. And I'll be honest, I've been to many salons that have been super busy and I don't really see it happening. Like, I've never seen someone being educated on how to actually do the technique. So for me, if you're a boy, I would just mimic it in the air so you can actually go in, like show them how to hold, say the styler. This would be the angle you hold it. This is the turn and this is the direction you pull it down. What you can then do is let the client hold the product on their hair and you hold this, the product with them and guide them on their own hair and then you let your client do it on their own. So there's three steps to that. It's that either self style on your own hair and show them or air style so that they can see the angle, do it with them and then let them do it on their own. Fantastic, that's a great trick. And actually that shows you we don't need the wigs. We can just, as you say, do the the air. you can use the air. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, due to, due to COVID and hygiene as well, I, I don't think it would be great to have one wig where everyone's kind of getting it it would be, be better to do it on the clients here are there any issues at the moment with covid that's a good point janine with uh, giving the um the client the tool to use themselves um so i would suggest we, we have a very in-depth um cleaning kind of best practice on our products so anything that you've used that maybe the clients touched you would just sanitize and wipe down and obviously during during one appointment to the next, um, the, you've got time to kind of clean that product. So, you know, we do give guidance to all our salons and what is the best practice for that. Um, another point is, you know, potentially salons may have one or two stylers that you use on all their clients. You know, we would still suggest to sanitize, but what you'll find is our stylers are 185 degrees. So if there's any bacteria, the heat does kill it anyway, but we would still, during this time, always say sanitize your products, even with a damp towel or just a little bit of detergent spray and give it a good wipe. That's a good little tip there as well, Janine. Thank you. Um, and I guess, what would you say, look, we're kind of moving into the trends aspect now. Okay. Um, what would you say is sort of the most popular tools in salons at the moment? Have you seen any, especially in this time, have you noticed that anything's kind of become more popular in recent months compared to previously? Has there been a shift? In um, to be honest, I think, I think it's pretty spread out. You, you know, like what we are talking about is kind of not one product fits all. So actually for a brand, when we launch a product, salons love them and they'll talk about that product because it's the newness of it. But it's not necessarily the product that everybody wants. So for, for me, I would definitely say our Helios hair dryer is still a massive product. Everyone still loves that gorgeous bouncy blow dry. And you know, not even the bouncy blow dry, but even just a beautiful smooth blow dry. And you know, with their Helios product, um, Helios hair dryer, we have some amazing claims of that product. So yeah, I definitely say hair dryers, but Helios is big, styler and the tongs. But of course we've just launched our newest um, hot brush, which is the GHD Rise. Um, so this is giving you almost like 
you've toned your hair, but a gorgeous blow dry texture throughout as well. So you're getting the best of both worlds with that product. So I wouldn't say there's a specific favorite, but I'd definitely say, you know, the newness makes people want to use it and retail it and buy it. Um, but our hair dryers and our stylers and curve are always going to be that staple kind of portfolio product as well. Definitely. So it's going to be those hot new must-haves, but also the classic. Yeah. Never, they never go yeah. out of style, do they? Never go out of style. And I think even when we talk about a styler, so a straightener, it's a one product that does it all. So you'll get a wave, you can straighten, you can curl, you can create anti-volume. So, you know, people that have maybe not got a large budget want to invest in that product because it's a versatile product. Whereas someone like myself, who is, I would say, an impulse buyer, I always want the new thing. I, I couldn't tell you how many products I've got in that room upstairs. You're a stylist dream as a client, yeah. aren't you? So Basically, I'm a sucker for new products. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, for someone like myself, I want everything. So, you know, it's to understand the customer or the client first, and then you can then talk about what you need to recommend. Fantastic. And you yeah, noted for everyone there that Janine is the perfect client. And <laughs> <laughs> um, what styling trends do you think are going to be popular in the coming months? What, what kind of trends have you noticed out and about? Um, so quite interestingly, um, we were working on our kind of Christmas trend reveal. Um, and, you know, it's still very much that that lived in texture. So, you know, hair being kind of wavy, but kind of like a soft texture throughout it as well. Um, and then also for me, adornment and hair accessories is, is going to be a huge, again, this season for kind of the Christmas party season. But, you know, like red carpet hair at this time of year is massive. So, you know, deep waves, gorgeous, shiny hair, that gorgeous strong blow dry or that kind of nice textured look with our GHD rise is going to be big. And then, of course, you'll always have your your kind of staples, which is your ponytail, which is it does, it, there's always a new take on the ponytail. So kind of looking at a kind of Christmas time, that kind of jeweled shiny texture on top is really nice with a lovely kind of matte finish on the pony. Um, or the opposite where you've got gorgeous height, but that deep set wave through the bottom of your ponytail. And then you can add accessories to really finish that style off. Amazing. Do you think that because of um, obviously lockdown where people have been stuck at home for so long, do you think there'll be a kind of a counter trend to super glossy kind of sleek that kind of you know red as you yeah. said red carpet hair where people want to look hair. good for going yeah. out I think even now like obviously nightclubs and things aren't open but girls are getting ready and doing their dinner dates like I've, I've done it myself on a Sunday I've got all glammed up like I'm going on a night out just to go for a meal like a Sunday lunch but yeah like doing your own hair is never the same as getting a professional to do it so if you can really invest in that gorgeous really sculpted shiny deep set ways in your hair they're going to want that because not only will you get one day out of it but you're going to get a good few days out of it, out of it. and then maybe by day two or three you've got that kind of more softer lived in texture so yeah I think it's definitely they want to kind of invest in that more kind of red party here for the Christmas season definitely and even going to the supermarket is an event isn't it these days so. why not <laughs> Fantastic. And how, how do you think um, stylists can use these upcoming trends that we'll be seeing in the next few months to encourage um, clients to purchase those more high value items at the end of their appointments? So, you know, see, for me, I think it's really if you understand the trend, it's about kind of making it diluting it down. So it's a it's a wearable trend, you know. As a stylist, we are huge staples on kind of fashion weeks. We, we follow fashion weeks. We see what's kind of happening on that catwalk. And then we as certain brands will then kind of make that into a beautiful wearable style. So it's about understanding the fashion trend and where that's came from, but then diluting it down and maybe linking it to potentially celebrity styles or people know your clients are going to know um and obviously at the moment you know a lot of styles are they don't have magazines anymore they're not having these in the salon but I definitely don't think there's any harm in creating some digital mood boards where you could actually go okay so this is the catwalk trend this is how it's, you're kind of seeing it kind of in reality um and letting them if you've got an ipad they could see it on that or you could say you know what we'll do is we we can email you the digital mood board and then they can look at it on their phone as we're sitting in the salon. Um, it's just another way of doing it that, you know, is more hygienic, but it's actually 
much more modern in the new, new normal digital world that we're kind of working with so definitely and would you have you noticed are there any sort of big um stars like instagram stars or tiktok stars or anything like that that's really tapping into trends at the moment have you noticed any correlation with that um I'm going to say um, there's actually a girl who was part of my freelance team um, and she's now part of THD, but she's she's hit TikTok fame. Oh, well, we want to hear about her, Jenny. Her, her name's Chloe Swift. She's actually fantastic. Oh, amazing. She, she does very amazing educational content on TikTok. Um, mm. she, she just hit the nail on the head with it and she's got thousands of followers and I find myself going around going I'm obviously not down with the kids so can you show me can you show me um, how you've done this but she she's definitely someone to watch on TikTok so it's Chloe Swift stylist um, but she's Chloe going, Smith stylist right? S-W-I-F-T um, Chloe Swift Swift, Chloe yeah. Swift stylist so anyone who wants yeah. to check her out and she's on TikTok she's on TikTok but she's amazing, amazing stuff and short snappy techniques that you know even for your clients they'll go ah I understand that so she's definitely a one to watch because you know she's kind of close to the brand as well so it's something that we as a company are we're pretty proud of because she's she's doing fantastic so that's yeah. amazing and I guess that's a great tip as well for stylists isn't it that you can use your social channels to help mm -hmm. your client to recreate these looks when they yeah get and I think it. on social I'm, I'm going to touch on this because I think it's something that you're either amazing at or something you're not comfortable about doing. Um, but you, the more you watch what other people's pages are doing, the hashtags are using, just start to educate yourself and really showcase your work. Like this is, you know, and, and even having fun with it as well. Like you look at TikTok, it's about fun. Like, I mean, I've done it myself. I've looked like I've just rolled out of bed and then clicked my fingers and my hair's done on TikTok. Like these are the kind of things that, you know, as as your clients lying in bed at night bored, she's going to start going through and looking at the salon pages. If you've got a TikTok or if you've got an Instagram, you know, they just launched Instagram Reels, which yes. is a very similar thing to TikTok. Mm -hmm. So, you know, have fun with it, but keep doing it and put yourself out there because it's a really good way to kind of engage with your clients, but also get your salon name and your work out there too. That's a fantastic tip there, Jennings. So I guess if people yeah. start following you, they'll think, oh, where is your salon? Where, where can I come Absolutely. to you and get my hair done in the way you've yeah. done it? And like you say, click your fingers, it's done. And they'll think, well, how did you get that look? Totally. Fantastic. Are there any other names to watch that um, everyone tuning in should be um, looking out for? So we've got Chloe, Chloe Swift stylist on TikTok. Yeah, and then we've got Aliona Love, who is good. So Aliona is great on Instagram and she's also great on TikTok as well. So Aliona's part of our freelance team but she does a lot of kind of beauty blogging stuff as well so if you're just into beauty she's a good one to watch um and she's really kind of getting her name kind of known um on tiktok as well so yeah definitely look out for aliona love aliona love aliona love and chloe swift stylist on yes. tiktok fantastic yeah. great great tips there Janine. and i think yeah if anyone who wants to tap into that social side to try and up their retailing should be checking them out and learning and watching how they do it 100 percent. yeah it's a natural way i guess of easing it is. In. i think we just need to do we need to do it more we need to talk about products more and you know as much as ghd styling products are a product you use near the end of the service it's still that appointment so you need to be recommending good products that are going to give the clients lots of good hair days and lots of benefits health benefits to your hair Definitely. And I guess from a salon point of view, if you're a freelancer, it's also a great um, earner for you as well, isn't it? When you can only reduce clients each 100%. day. Yeah, it's, it's a big thing. You know, if you, yeah. if you start to retail and you retail in that kind of high end product, you're not mm. doing the right thing by your client, but you're growing your business as well. So, yeah, I would definitely say recommendation is key. And that consultation, you really need to kind of ask so many questions and understand who your customer is. Fantastic. Well, Jane, we're getting to the end of the session. It's gone by super quick. Um, but I think there's been so many great tips and advice that you've shared with us today, Janine. And from moving, from, you know, even the fun stuff, like, you know, experimenting on TikTok and Instagram Reels and stuff like that. And um, to the more um, kind of serious things about actually speaking to your clients throughout the consultation and understanding what the hair is all about. Yeah, yeah what, absolutely. What, like, it's will, key. will suit them which is brilliant yeah. and um if anyone goes to ghdhair.com they'll be able to see as well won't they the professional yeah, absolutely 
that you have available. Fantastic. Did you have Thank any, you so much. You're welcome. Did you have any final words of wisdom that you wanted to share, Janine, before we um Yes. Part I, I would just say to all the stylists out there, I know this time is very difficult because we're not getting as many clients in the salon, but you know, use this as a positive. Start to you got a little bit extra time educate yourself start doing stuff online and don't be afraid to talk to your clients about retailing and the best products because actually they want to know and they're most of them have educated themselves during lockdown so i'm sure the more you do it the better you'll get it and we're not salespeople here we're doing recommendations as a professional fantastic that's great advice there janine and like you said just because they don't buy from you the first time doesn't mean that it, they're not thinking about it for the next Absolutely. time absolutely oh well it's been an absolute pleasure janine thank, thank you, you so much, much laura for being with us today and sharing all of your words of wisdom it's been great thank you take care take bye. care everyone bye